Okay, so when I turn on the white background, I see that it all feels so sharp. So here is my solution to that. I turn off all the background layers, even my sketch, and I can get rid of the original background layer, right? And then what I do is I go to the very top layer and I hold down Option and I say Layer Merge Visible while holding down Option. And I turn off all the other layers that make up my creature. And so everything is on one combined layer now. I can turn back on the white and the black and the gray and even my sketch. Okay, now if I go to that one combined layer, and sometimes I'll label that, combined layer, and I held down option so it didn't get rid of all my different elements, it just put it combined on top. Now I'm going to use my magic wand and select the empty space on the outside of my creature. And notice, even though I checked really hard on all three different backgrounds, there's still little bits of debris that it's selecting. Little things like somewhat low opacity pixels, but they're there. Okay, so now I'm going to do the select and mask to refine that edge. It's gonna remember my settings, it's gonna bite away from them just a little bit. I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna get up close, see what it actually does, especially to where it's soft or where it's too crisp and needs to be soft. And I'm gonna hit delete, 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 deselect, and now that looks all a little bit more even. And now if I select the empty space, for the most part, it's nice and clean. There might be little things I just use a 100% eraser for. Getting rid of whatever remnant was there. But if it looks good on the different backgrounds, then I'm happy. And now that edge looks a lot more believable. Okay, so what's next? Now this is my favorite part. What I'm gonna do is make a new blank layer using the little create new layer icon next to the trash icon in the layer window. And that I'm going to mark red and I'm gonna label that layer clone stamp layer. This is finishing on the top of everything. I'm gonna use a new tool. It is underneath the brush tool and above the two above the eraser tool. And it is called the clone stamp tool. We're gonna to use it as a brush very much like we've been using the eraser. So a pressure sensitive soft edge brush. We want the hardness to be somewhere in the middle. I'll put it like in the 40s. I want the size to be fairly large, like that. And then we want the mode to be normal, right? And we want the opacity to be about 50%. Now this is how Clone Stamp works. I'm gonna turn off all the background layers again, because I don't want to accidentally stamp from the backgrounds. And anywhere I think I need more texture, for instance, if I want some of this texture in with the legs, this is how Clone Stamp works. Take some practice. You hold down Option and you get a little target, not dissimilar to your targeted screen grab. Then you click where you want to, to clone from, like say there. I've clicked. And now I just move and you can see it gives me a ghost of that image. And wherever I click down, it's gonna start painting that in at whatever opacity I say. So if I wanna cover up with a little bit more hair, you see how the stamp actually moves along with me. So it's a traveling selection. Now the beauty of this is I can fill in lots of gaps with whatever texture I want. And I can make it so it it just beautifully transitions. But it's also only on its own layer. So because it's on its own layer, I can effortlessly and softly erase from it. 
I'm going to do that at a lower opacity because I'm doing everything soft. And so it is like a texture fill internal to your creature. So keep it all, my advice is keep it all on one layer. And then you want to sample from all layers. So if it's not working the way you think it should, it's because you don't have it, the clone stamp sent to sample from all layers. So I can bring a little bit of this texture here. And then because it's on its own layer, I can kind of erase away from it a little bit. Bring it back. Then you decide if it's helpful or not. So where else might I need some of that? Maybe on the neck here. It's clone stamp. Let's see, maybe a little bit of this. I always do it at a lower opacity, so it's it's not just repeating the same things over and over again. And the more you hit it, the higher the opacity is. And then I can use my eraser, and I can blend it back in. And then you can dodge and burn your clone stamp as well. To help it come, come through even better. And we'll only dodge and burn where the clone stamp is. Now I have the combined layer, but what if I turn the combined layer off and then turn the individual layers back on? I can do the same thing I did on the combine layer with the edge. And this is how. I go to my combined layer, turn it back on, and then select the outside edge, say select and mask. Same thing I did, right? It bites it in a little bit, it softens it, it feathers it. I deleted it three times to soften the edge. Takes a little time. Big selection. Come on. But then I can move that new selection that I got from the combine layer and move it through all my individual elements. And that's important because we don't want to only have the combined layer as useful for us later. When we animate this later, we might want to move the tusk and the head separate from the body. And in this instance, I want to play with making that those flowers maybe a little bit transparent and showing a little bit of the hide underneath. Oh, Photoshop, why are you doing this right now? Okay. So now I'm on the combined layer. I've selected it. I've re refined it. Come on. Just do it for me. <laughs> and once it, there we go. Hopefully it's made the selection. Now I can go through my layers and delete, delete. Ah, no, didn't make the selection. All right, let me save. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I go, I go on my combine layer. I select it. And actually, because I already softened it, this selection is a little bit different. But I do want to go ahead. Come on, keep up with me and mask just to soften it a little bit more. Good, there we go. And you see how I have the selection, so I can turn off the combined layer now. And what I'm going to do is just go through my layers. I'll turn on the white so you can see it. Go through my different layers and just delete, delete, delete. Done. And then I can hit Command D to deselect. 
So now I've got that softened overall edge everywhere on each component, which then allows me to take the orchids and maybe play with a slightly lower opacity. Just slightly, like 97. If I'm really daring, I can play with a different blending style, but I don't think that's going to be what I want. No. <laughs> And then I might make some final levels adjustments to them. Maybe deepen their shadows. Maybe brighten their highlights just a tad. So it's nice to still be able to, to adjust individual components. Now, to be honest, I'm not sold yet on this tuft of hair back here. So I have it on the combined layer, but if I want to compare, I can then go to the layer that has that tuft of hair. And I need lots of it, lots of that layer. So what I'll do is I'll just select that tuft of hair, then say select inverse. So it's everything except that tuft of hair on that layer, then command duplicate it, and then turn off the one with the tuft of hair. So there's my creature without it. Let's try it on a black background. There's my creature with it. What do you guys think? Better with or without? Yeah, I think without is kind of nicer and smooth at the top. So then I might, you know, erase the combined layer, turn off all my backgrounds, and now on top of the clone stamp layer, once I'm happy with it, and I didn't need to use it too much for this. Sometimes I have to use it a whole lot. And I'm actually going to use kind of the ghosting, a big 0% hardness eraser, and take down the clone stamp a little bit. So I think I overdid it on the neck. Yeah, so I like that better. Okay, so now I'm going to make a new combined layer. Hold down Option. Make sure the background's tur turned off. Go to Layer, then Merge Visible. Now, this is why we're going to do it at the end here. Turn off all those backgrounds, all those layers, but then turn on like a white background, black background, gray background. Now I want to go to my Combine Layer. I'll rename it. Mark it orange. I'm not going to do any substantive changes except for just going to image auto tone, right? And it just brightens it up a little bit. And if I think that looks good, then I'm ready to submit it. And the way I want you to submit it is we're going to save it as a PNG file. So it's free floating without any background turned on. So first I save it as my Photoshop file with your name, so Carl Assignment 2 Creature Composite. It should be on a format that's larger than by 11, larger than 11 by 14 at 350 pixels per inch. You can always check your image size. So I'm 16 by 12 by 350. Then I want you to save as, not as a JPEG this time, because we don't want it to fill in the background with white I want to see it free floating. And that's going to help you later when we put it into your landscape. So file, save as, my computer's going slow, to the desktop. Command D will navigate you there. Not as a Photoshop file, not as a JPEG file, but as a PNG file. And you should have a checkerboard behind it when you do this. And then the two files you're going to submit are your sketch, this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and move that to the desktop, just the JPEG of my sketch. You could do the, the screen grab of your sketch. 
and the PNG file. Now, PNG files can take a little longer to save, 